I want to welcome everyone to this service to honor our wonderful Letha Dawson Scanzoni. My name is Kendra Weddle, and I became acquainted with Letha through EEWC uh, several years ago, and uh, subsequently we became good friends. And so it is my honor to uh, participate and to help lead us through this um, service to celebrate Letha today. Before we get started, though, I want to recognize that Alina Ruggiero and Ann Lindstatter and also Dave Scanzoni have done a lot of background work to make today possible. And so I want to thank them for their work and their dedication in uh, preparing for today. Before we get started, I'd like to pass, um, pass off to Alina so she can give us a few technology tips that will be helpful for us today. Hi, everybody. I recognize most of you. I'm so glad to see all of you here. Um, I want to thank very much um, the planning committee and the family of Letha for um, giving me the privilege of being able to participate um, and help with this service today. But first of all, I wanted to introduce my colleague and dear local friend, Erica Knotts. Um, she won't be on camera today, but um, she is my tech backup for today, and I am so, so grateful. Uh, hopefully, the technology will all go smoothly, but what I really want is um, the technology hopefully to fade into the background so that we can just focus on honoring the life and the legacy of um, Letha Dawson Scansoni, whom we all love. So now I will turn it back to Kendra for the beginning of the service. Thank you, Elena, for that. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Thank you for joining us in this service of remembrance and celebration of Letha Dawson Scanzoni. We come together today in grief, acknowledging our human loss. So may El Shaddai, our all-sufficient God, grant us grace that in our pain we also find comfort. And in our sorrow, we find hope, and in death, resurrection. But we also gather in celebration, celebration of a life fully lived, of our dear Letha who made all the difference to so many. How could we not celebrate her today? Look at what one person can accomplish when they embrace this holy gift of being alive. As I was thinking about planning our time together today, it struck me that one of the best things that we can do is to allow Letha to speak to us today. And so I went through some of the uh, papers and, and uh, things that I had of hers, and what struck me was um, a portion of an email that she had written to EEWC um, when she had breast cancer and was going through the treatment. And so in this excerpt that I want to read to you from Letha, we get so much of her insight and um, advice that I think is helpful for us um, as we continue to uh, live here and now. So let me share with you this excerpt from Letha's letter. She wrote this, I have always operated my life with a sense of urgency, of time running out, of enjoying what I was doing so much that I have often imagined pushing against the hands of a clock so that they wouldn't move further, as though I could stop time from passing so rapidly. I have wanted to live each moment meaningfully and could never ever understand why people talked about killing time or not taking time for things they hoped to do in some vague 
someday or time for people they hope to spend time with sometime. Time is the most precious thing we have. It is what makes up our lives and it needs to be relished and at the same time invested wisely. The packing life full approach to living became my habit. My friends tell me I still live that way. Loving life, loving people, loving learning with a sense of urgency and at the same time experiencing an inner quietness of living in the now, all the while savoring the good gifts God gives us, whether a delicious meal, the beauty of a tiny flower pushing through a crack in a sidewalk, the sound of glorious music, hours spent on the computer enjoying the vast library of the world at my fingertips through the internet delighting in time with a grandchild or spending an unhurried hour or two in a deep conversation with a friend by phone, in person, or email. I think living in the moment can help us better relate to people of any age because we are all in the same time period together. And so I hope that this uh, excerpt from Letha's letter will continue to percolate for you um, as we reflect together. I want to now open our time um, for any family who would like to um, speak. Well, this is Morgan. I'm happy to say a few words. Um, so my name is Morgan. I'm um, one of Grandma Letha's, it's so funny calling her Letha because I have always called her Grandma Letha, but um, <laughs> one of Letha's five grandchildren. And, um, you know, I feel very lucky. I spent a lot of time with her at the end of her life, especially when she moved to Charlotte. And I was at that time, you know, in high school and college and coming back and forth from DC where I live now. And, um, I was thinking this morning, just, you know, reflecting on all the conversations I've had with her over my life. And for her, I think, you know, she cared so deeply about everyone in her life, her family, her friends, all of you, but also just the people of the world. And it's interesting, you know, every time I talk to her, she would tell me about the accomplishments of the other grandchildren and everything they were doing in the world. And, you know, of course, um, my father and, and Steve as well. Um, and then it was everything that you all were doing, everything that was going on in your lives and what your children were doing and your spouses. And then next it was everyone else she was interacting with. So, I mean, especially I think of her time at the assisted living, I think she was the absolute favorite resident there because she took the time to listen and ask questions and, care about what was going on in the staff's lives and the people that were, you know, she was interacting with most at that period of her life. Um, and so I think when I just think of her, I think about someone who cared and was so empathetic and just took more time to listen than to speak, which is, I think, something so many of us could, you know, learn from. Um, and just from the time I was a kid, <coughs> whatever I was interested in, she was interested in. I think I mentioned one time that I liked junior mints and cheer wine, and she had that every time I saw her for the rest of her life. Um, and even another time, you know, at this point she was in her late eighties and I came back from DC and mentioned I've been watching a show that I really liked. And she, the next morning I called her and she was like, oh yeah, I'm pretty tired. And I said, well, is everything okay? And she said, oh, well, I just stayed up till 2 a.m. I watched the entire show. It's like six hour long episode. And so she was just someone that, you know, she took the time to care about the things that the people she loved cared about and to feel what they were feeling, whether it was the joys of life or the hardships. And when I think about just her life and all the amazing things she's done and what we've heard from you all from the last, you know, nine months and also just the fact that she was in the New York Times. She's just accomplished so, so much. And it's amazing that someone who spent so much time caring about other people, was able to accomplish what she did. So I'm so grateful to see all of you. And I feel like I've heard so much about you all. So it's great to, to actually see some faces now. Um, but thank you again to everyone who put this together. 
Thank you so much, Morgan. Morgan, thanks. This is Dave, her dad, and uh, I appreciate that. I, I want to apologize to everyone because I'm having a few camera problems, but hopefully you've got the audio so you can hear me. Okay. We do have the audio. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, of course, I am Dave Scanzoni, one of Letha's two sons, and my brother, Steve, is with us today also, and his, some of his family greatly appreciate all of you, as Morgan said, who joined us today to celebrate Letha's life and legacy. Joining us for today's service, just to give a, a, a sense of geographical uh, breadth, uh, are individuals in Texas, Oregon, Michigan, California, Virginia, Indiana, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Massachusetts, Illinois, Washington, DC, and Canada, and perhaps more locations. It's a testament to the broad reach of Letha's work and friendships over the seven decades of her adult life. Letha was ahead of her time by a half century. Her books and articles, particularly those published in the 1970s, addressed issues still vigorously swirling in the religious, political, social, and cultural discourses of today, 50 years later. Her groundbreaking writing brought love and hope to literally thousands of people across the U.S. and in countries around the world during a career that began in the early 1960s. She often received letters of thanks and appreciation from depressed or downtrodden individuals who told her that her uplifting writings had saved their lives, in many cases, literally. Letha also was a close personal friend to many people, always generous in her time, her counsel, her encouragement, and her spirit. And uh, even in the final two years of her life, after a stroke required a move to an assisted living facility here in Charlotte, North Carolina, her love, care, and compassion for others continued. And as Morgan just referenced, as a re resident at the assisted living facility, Letha became known as a go-to personal counselor for many of the underpaid, overworked, financially struggling staffers, health aides, cleaners, cooks, essentially the working poor. In Letha, they found a friend, a listener, a supporter, a heart. Throughout her life, she also was a loving, wonderful daughter, sister, mother, and grandmother serving as a kind and giving role model to every member of her family in multiple ways. Her joy, her energy, and her humor will be sorely missed by all, but her legacy and a lifetime full of happy memories live on in all of us. Thank you again for joining us today. And if there are any other family members who would like to speak, feel free to join, uh, join now. Uh, yes, uh, her brother, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, memorial. She was a super, super sister, although my fondest memories were she and I when we were growing up in Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Mifflintown, Pennsylvania, when, uh, believe it or not, she was quite a uh, tomboy. <laughs> and uh, running through the woods and whatever have you. Uh, then, uh, of course, we kind of high school, college, we pretty much split up. And then I uh, went on with a military career and I was gone. So every year we at least get to see each other once. But when we did, we always have a fine meal. She loved fine meals. <laughs> and uh, and it, we just had a great time and great memories. And uh, there, you couldn't have a better sister. She was a loving person, and uh, we just uh, miss her and miss making phone calls and having long discussions. And uh, that's about all I can contribute, other than the fact that I, I am so proud to have had her as a sister. Mm. <laughs> and this is my wife, Kathy. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Um, this is a wonderful thing that you all have organized. It's just beautiful, uh, just beautiful. And I know Letha is, I like to think that she's thinking, hey, they're doing a pretty good job here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I like to think. But um, no, she, she was a wonderful person, as you all know. Um, she was my sister-in-law, and um, 
even though we didn't spend a lot of time together, we were able to, as you know, having young families, we spent some time together. We were always, of course, moving all over the place. And if, if Letha and her family were en route to wherever we were headed or whatever or coming back from, we would definitely stop. And she always, you know, she always was a delight to be around. And she made special efforts to make us feel at home. And um, she had this special gift, which I know you all were able to see in her, is that when she spoke with you, you were the only person that was in her mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a gift. That is such a gift. I, I will miss that. I will miss the, the call hearing Bob and Lisa talk about their childhood and they just loved it, you know? And um, it was just, just a beautiful thing. So mm -hmm. um, again, she was she was great and greatly missed, but I like to think that she's still still with us. So, and this is our son Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> he's unannounced. How are we doing? He's here with us. <laughs> That's wonderful. So nice that you could join us. Um, I'm glad I could, and uh, very nice, very nice words. Um, I guess I echo pretty much what mom and dad have said. Um, as an aunt, uh, you know, I still, I guess my one fond memory is it's very short and sweet, but uh, she had come to visit us in uh, Kentucky on the farm. And at the time I was uh, attempting to play the cornet. And of course she shows up and she like, really took quite an interest. And the next yes. thing you know, she's trying to show me all this stuff, which I guess she hadn't played the trombone in some years, but you, you couldn't tell. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> anyhow. But uh, no, it's it's good to hear everyone, uh, you know, especially how she's touched everyone's lives. Um, you know, Morgan, you know, I remember her. We just moved to North Carolina uh, when Morgan was, but a wee, wee little one. Uh, same with our girls, and now they're all big and grown and, you know, just doing great things. So, um, as I said, I know Aunt Letha was proud of, of all of us and, and everyone, and we, too, loved her much and will miss her. And uh, thanks to all of you putting this on. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful to, to get to hear from all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Are there any other family members who are on and who would like to share? Okay, so um, before we have uh, friends, op open this up for friends to, to share a little bit, I thought I would read a scripture that was one of Letha's favorites. And um, now you all know that she had many favorites and she was very well uh, acquainted with the Bible and it was a source of um, great inspiration to her throughout her entire life. Um, but I just chose this one passage. I'll read a few excerpts from Psalm 139, uh, which was one of her favorites. And it goes like this, God, you have searched me and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. You read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate in all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue, Yahweh, before you know what it is. Where could I run from your spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in death, you're already there. I could fly away with wings made of dawn or make my home on the far side of the sea. But even there, your hand will guide me, your mighty hand holding me fast. You created my inmost being and stitched me together in my mother's womb. For all these mysteries, I thank you. For the wonder of myself, for the wonder of your works. My soul knows it well. My frame was not hidden from you. While I was being made in that secret place, knitted together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my body, even there. All of my days were written in your book, all of them planned before even the first of them came to be. How precious your thoughts are to me, O oh God. 
how impossible to number them. I could no more count them than I could count the sand. But suppose I could, you would still be with me. So now I want to open up our time together for any friends who might want to share something about um, Letha. I'd be delighted to um, share because Letha was a very special woman to me and certainly to Virginia, whom I partnered with for 16 and a half years. I wouldn't typically wear a t-shirt to an occasion this solemn, but I think Letha oh. <laughs> So Lita one of the- would be really glad to see that. <laughs> right. I, one of the last things I did, uh, for and with Virginia was get her signature on her mail-in ballot to vote for Joseph Biden. And she died that night. I went to the post office and had it postmarked. She died that night. So I went back, held her hand and said, we got it. You got it, you voted. I'm sure Letha is voting there. And so of course, Letha and Virginia wrote, co-wrote, is the homosexual my neighbor? And if you don't mind, I'll just read a nickel of the preface. We, the authors, first met in 1973 at a theological seminary where we both had been invited to speak at a symposium on women in the church. But for years before that time, we had been reading and appreciating each other's books and articles, sensing a kinship of spirit in our outlooks on life. Both of us stressed a solid integration of faith and learning. Both of us were interested in ethics and both of us were concerned for compassionate love and honest justice in a world full of hate exploitation and oppression. It isn't surprising that as we discussed our ideas over the years since 1973 through long and frequent letters, and I can attest <laughs> there were long and frequent letters and phone calls, uh, the notion of sharing these ideas with others began to take root in our minds. This book is one result. At first, we planned a book on general ethic pr ethical principles as they applied to a number of contemporary social issues of concern to Christians, abortion, euthanasia, pornography and censorship, capital punishment, and world hunger, to name a few. We thought of homosexual as only one chapter in this cluster of social concerns. Yet as we thought and wrote and prayed, and as we watched news media reports of the current sharp controversy over homosexuality in our society, it seemed fitting to publish our work on this subject first. And I remember as Virginia and she were collaborating, Virginia was not out and not out to Letha. Right. And she prayed mightily about would, should she be out. And so when she said, Letha, we're writing about me. Letha was ashen and recovered and recovered. And her resiliency to then completely be <laughs> behind is the homosexual my neighbor. Uh, was marked, and, and uh, I know Virginia appreciated it greatly. That was a different time than now, mm -hmm. and uh, friends were farther uh, removed than than the situation currently. So, Lita, we know you're here. Uh, we know you're dancing in heaven with Nancy and Virginia and Susanna and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and all of the feminists and we cherish your time here on earth and we cherish the opportunity to interface with you in a myriad of manner. And now we celebrate you, your life, your impact, which will carry on for decades and probably centuries to come. Thank you, dear sister. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Deborah. Is there someone else who might want to share something? Yeah. I'm I'm Sharon Regan. I'm in Boston. Sharon? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Dave. And nice to see Morgan, whom I've seen in pictures as a little child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not since. Um, I met Lisa through her books, writing to her about certain concerns in my family that I grew up in. And we became buddies, like all of you, I guess, in the letter writing mode and some phone calls. And then got to meet her at the first EWC conference in um, Washington, D.C. I believe it was the first one in 1975. Took a train from Iowa, where we lived then, and five months pregnant. <laughs> yeah. 
It was quite a drama to do all that by myself. Um, and then later, we moved to Chicago. My former husband was a clergy. And after a lot of strains, um, that all ended. And Leith and I talked on the phone a number of times and decided to move to Boston for many reasons. And Letha sort of, as she put it, I'm giving you my son. So, Dave, I don't see you, but hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And moved to Boston to find the place I had planned for the kids and I, two daughters, to live was sold. As we drove through the country from Chicago to New England in a big U-Haul truck, no cell phones. That was 1983. But I was greeted in my panic by Dave, whom Letha had, as she put it, give, given her son to me to help, not knowing what I was facing or nobody knew. It was quite a thing. But Dave became the best uncle to my little girls, my two little girls. And the relationship continued with Letha through all kinds of ways. And my boss, Kathy, who is... He became the mother of Nor Morgan, whom I see there up in the corner. Um, you know, was a great boss in the Boston BNA. So I could say a lot of things, but she was such a great support through a lot of hard times, a lot of happy times. And I lost track of her in the email way for some years, but Dave reconnected us in the last year of her life. So I'm just really thankful to be here, thankful to to Dave and Kathy, Morgan's mom, and I don't think she's here, but, um, and also to EWC, and now EWC. Went to many conferences after that first one, and met her in person um, in the, sh the Washington conference. I'm just trying to remember all the events, and later in... Um, uh, uh, Saratoga Springs. So anyways, that's it. But I'm grateful for the connection she made. And I'm sure my daughters would say the same because, as I say, Dave was their probably best friend for a long time till he moved away. So thank you so much. Um, I could say a lot, but that's enough. <laughs> thank you so much, Sharon. Yes. Can you hear me? This is Elizabeth. Bowman and I am coming to you from the floor of the living room of my house in Indianapolis, Indiana. It, I met Letha so long ago. I cannot say for sure I remember exactly how, but I think it was from corresponding with her after reading her book, All We Are Meant to Be. Mm -hmm. I grew up in, as I think many of you did, in conservative, Protestant, fundamentalist, you know, fundamentalism, and all that I was meant to be, according to them, would be wife, mommy, and maybe secretary or... Christian school teacher, and I'm not putting those things down. What I'm saying is there was no vision in my background for women to be anything other than our biological endowment. So all we're meant to be was to me the opening of a world, and I am so grateful. And over the years, Letha became a wise mother to me. I lost my own mother to cancer in 1980, long, long time ago when I was in my late 20s. And Letha became like a second mom to me after my mom passed and I'm glad I had her um, 
I went through medical school and then practiced medicine in academics. And it was, let's just say, a hostile atmosphere for me as a woman and as a feminist. Um, and I had in Letha unwavering support. And also uh, a friend who knew me well, knew how much I love jigsaw puzzles, and showered me with two or three every year for Christmas and or my birthday, and increased my puzzle collection. <laughs> to where after we decided that we are going someday to move to a smaller house, you know, my puzzle collection was so big I had to um, purge, I guess purge would be the word, call the herd, purge the collection, and so many of them just have the word Letha written across them in my memory. Mm -hmm. She was so perceptive and so loving. Um, and I really admired her because she was also a skilled writer. And I know that's not easy. Writing is not easy. She was such a skilled writer. And had such wisdom and also was so very loving at the same time. And I have to say, she has enriched me and she made me a better person. And I'm so grateful that God put her on this planet and I got to meet her and be a friend and have her as a friend. Morgan. It was nice to see your face many, many times throughout the years. Letha would ask me to pray for you. And when you went to live in Washington, D.C., she was very concerned about your safety. And I can understand that. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, she asked me to pray for you. And, of course, I did. Um, but she was so proud of you, and Chris, I think you're the one that made a collage of pictures for me of all kinds of flowers at the behest of your grandma, Aletha, who knew that I'm a flower gardener, and it's still hanging on the wall of my home office and I'm and when I see it I think of you and I think of Lita. She was an absolutely amazing woman. On Friday nights I would think about the fact that she would be on the phone with Alina and I'm trying to remember who else. Linda. Yeah. Linda Beasy. I'm sorry. Linda Beasy. Linda Beasy. Yeah, Linda Beasy. In that very, very long running Bible study and friendship and discussion. And one could not know that without being connected with her network and the Letha network, you know, makes other networks look puny <laughs> by comparison. She is the reason I know most of the people, if not all of them, that are on this Zoom. She connected us all in a way that I think made Jesus's heart strings just sing. You know, she was a connector. And I'll shut up now so other people can talk. Thank you so much, Liz. We really appreciate that.
Thank you for giving us a chance to come together and remember her. Now my husband's about to mute me. <laughs> Is there someone else who might like to share something? Ah, okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for organizing this. Um, I'm one of those people who uh, attribute Letha's early work to saving my life. Um, it's a story you all all know too well. Um, but I got to know her while I was working on my dissertation. And flipping through the folks here, I could see the names of several of the other people who great, uh, <laughs> generously talked with me while I was working on that. Um, and then later the book. Um, and I uh, can also attest to the way that people have described her as being so completely present when she's with who, with whomever she's with. Um, and I was a beneficiary of that um, intermittently throughout my life. I didn't stay in the evangelical world, so I didn't stay part of uh, EEWC uh, in the way some of you did. But um, she and I checked in on occasion, and uh, she helped me out of a couple of really complicated things that I'd probably just keep to myself. But I just, uh, uh, I just wanted to speak and say how much I really appreciated her. And I also brought props. Because I have a little collection of all edition, various <laughs> editions of all you are meant to me. Because it really, it really did save my life. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. Really appreciate you sharing that. Judy, did you happen to have your hand up and wanted to share? Yes, yes, I I did have my hand up. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of memories. I met Letha in 1978 and at, a, at the conference in uh, California. And it was through my lovely partner, Jean Bailey, that I met Letha. They had already become friends. And from that point on, we were, we were buddies. And at every conference, we found a way to get together and go out and, as Bob said, enjoy a meal. We were all foodies. And we would go out and enjoy a meal. And one of the things I want to say about Letha is the joy in her life she was filled with joy and she it radiated out into the world and to, to all of those of us who knew her and were around her long enough to get to know her very well we had lots of fun and lots of laughs as well as some very serious conversations over the years and I just wanted to, to highlight that about Letha, the, the, the joy that we experienced knowing her was one of the greatest attributes for me. And I really appreciate this gathering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judy. We appreciate that. Well, I'll go. Um, like many people I read, all were meant to be uh, while I was still at Wheaton College. In fact, I think I bought the book from their bookstore, and I've often said if they knew what that book accomplished, they wouldn't have had it in their bookstore. <laughs> but uh, I was tickled later on when I, I became a minister, and I was in Virginia Beach, and I was talking with... Uh, Kathleen, my neighbor, and she said, you sound like my friend Letha. You should meet my friend Letha. <laughs> so I immediately said, Letha Dawson Scanzoni is the only Letha I've ever heard of. See, I'd memorized her name from the book, her and Nancy, I, and, and to keep my eye out for other of their writings. And um, Kathleen was at, flabbergasted because she said, that is Letha. <laughs> and so we got to meet and I then, after my divorce, moved to Norfolk, 
And so I was close to Letha physically there. And um, we went out to eat a lot, yes. And she always had coupons. I think our favorite place was Denny's because they always had a two for one or a hat buy one, get one half <laughs> off or something. So uh, we, we ate, a, ate and talked a whole lot together. And the Letha, I used to talk about people that were a glass half full or glass half empty, and she was more than a glass half full. She was always on the positive side of things, and I was suffering some depression and, and was not always on the positive side of things, so it was a good encouragement for me. And like she did with so many other people, as soon as she met me, she wanted me to write for the, the magazine. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go Letha. And, um, and then she pulled me into EEWC, and then when the conference was at, I think it was Charlotte, and she was being one of the organizers, she pulled me in to be in the registrar. <laughs> so uh, she she really could pull people into things and in, encourage them and encourage their gifts. And the, the verse that I always equate with Letha, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was he was sent to find a wife for 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 uh, for Isaac. And the verse was, I being in the way, the Lord used, the Lord led me. And she always talked about, that's the King James English, of course, that you have to put yourself out there and be in the way, and then the Lord will use you. <laughs> that, that. That's been an encouraging verse to me since then. Well, I haven't been involved for a few years here, but um, all you people are precious to me, and, and Letha especially. Thank you so much, Becky. It's really great to hear from you. I think uh, Janine uh, is next up. I'm the Reverend Janine Cates Putman, and I met Letha in St. Louis at the CFT conference in uh, 2018, where I met many of you. And she, what stands out to me about Letha is her generosity. She had never met me. Um, she was so encouraging. Lee Weaver asked me to write for the website about being a first time attender of the conference. And so I did. And I sent it to Letha. She emailed me back and said, I've sent your article to Letha to edit. And I don't know what else was said in that email because I completely lost my mind. I thought <laughs> this is the preeminent Christian feminist writer of our time. And she is looking at my piddly little, this is what happened to me because I was a first time attender at CFT. <laughs> we uh, she edited many of my articles and blogs and interviews for the website and was entirely generous, not only with her writing advice and her editing, but with her encouragement in my ministry. And I, I, will, I will miss that. I've, I've already missed that. And I will miss that. And I want to I want to give her all of the flowers that she deserves I hope that I gave her flowers while she was here and I certainly want to remember her with the generosity and the grace in which she lived that's beautiful thank you so much Janine thank you Kendra it's great to see you yeah. You too. Rita Finger. Well, hello, everyone. And it's good to hear all, all the accolades for Lilitha because I, I agree. I, I would agree with everything that was said. <clears throat> uh, I, I, what I'd like to do is just to mention two specifics that uh, were very well that come to me when I think of her. Uh, first of all, this would have happened uh, almost, I guess, uh, almost uh, or a little bit over 50 years ago when I 
lived where I live right now, but I would go up to Pennsylvania to see my uh, my uh, parents with my my kids and um, a friend of mine from college lived up there and one time uh, she um, said to me or she I don't know if she called me or whatever when I was ready to go up there and she said Rita she says I have a book here that you've got to read a women's book well, this was the time of the, you know, you know, the total woman and so forth. So I said to her, I don't like women's books. <laughs> you will like this one. And it was all we're meant to be. <laughs> so when I went up there, I saw the book and, and got really interested in it. And that was actually, that was just before the conference that they had um, in 1970 five I think someone said and so I went and that's when I uh, met, met her and heard her for the for first time uh, so then I'll skip ahead and um, uh, mention one thing a number of you said that she would I don't know how you put it but she would come up with ways to you know help you or suggest whatever which is what she did to me too and this was uh i don't know how long ago now 10 10 or more years ago maybe 15 or so and she um some of you know the uh website um uh cft you uh, i'm sure you all know christians for uh wait cft christian Christian Feminism Today. Christian Feminism Today. I blanked yes. out on it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so she she said to me, and I, I again, I don't know when, uh, why don't you um, start a blog, a, a, a Bible study blog, since I was you know, a teacher of the New, New, New Testament. You you could pick a book or something and just write all the, your way through the book, you know, every two weeks, you know, or something like that. So I would have never, that, that sort of thing would have never entered my head. But she was the one who was thinking about things like that. So so she um, got, uh, got m m m me started and I... Um, I don't remember which book I began with, but every, uh, I would write one every two weeks and send it to her and she would read it, you know, and edit it because she was not only a writer, but an editor, like some of you said, and say, well, you know, uh, this isn't quite as clear. I think maybe if you would do this or, or redo something, you know, and so forth. So I always appreciated that kind of help because I don't always get it. Um, and so we we kept that up for I don't know how long. There's about seven sets of things that I that are on the website. But it was a wonderful way to keep in touch with her. And I, like I said, I really agree with all these all the things that all the rest of you have said about her. You know, friendship and and uh, input and so forth. It was it was wonderful. Thank you so much, Rita. We appreciate you sharing. Sure. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Kendra, can I try? Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I know that the organization has given me um, space both in print and um, at the last conference to be able to to um, express myself, but um, the family wasn't there. And so I, I want to do this so that the, the family can hear me fumble to try to express what Letha meant to me. Um, and the irony is that the, the metaphor that I'm going to use is funny because it's from a, a fantasy novel, and Letha had no time for fiction. <laughs> 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 
because there was way too much to learn in nonfiction in the real world <laughs> to spend her time um, reading fiction. But I, I, I read some fantasy fiction back in the day, and there's this, there's this uh, series of novels um, by Piers Anthony where um, everybody in the, all the characters in the novel each have a different magical um, power, and some of them are stronger than others. And um, there's this this one novel in the series where um, this this little girl, she's like five, goes on an adventure with a dragon named Stanley. And um, the dragon is brave and the dragon is strong and the dragon is big and just full of daring do and um the little girl and the dragon become wonderful friends throughout um their adventures together and we learn eventually spoiler for this book that's been out since the 80s um we learn eventually that um the magical power of the little girl is she has the power of magnification anything that she puts her attention to becomes bigger and stronger and better and what she believes becomes magnified and i feel like that was letha's power also because we find out in the book that the um the creature that she was adventuring with wasn't actually a dragon it was a caterpillar (laughs) it was like a little lizard (laughs) but she believed it into being a dragon and that's what Lita did for me. And that's what Lita did for thousands of people across the country. Um, and so to the degree that there is fire in me um, for inclusive feminist Christian justice, that fire is in me because of the dragon that she made me. And I feel that all of us she made us dragons, and because of that, we will be able to keep that fire alive in her memory and her legacy. <laughs> Thank you, Alina, for that. You have given us an image that we can all take forward and uh, appreciate that so much. I think I see Mary Hunt has her hand up. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm Mary Hunt, the co-director of WATER, the Women's Alliance for Theology, Ethics, and Ritual. And I'm um, here for two reasons. One is to pay my respects to the family and friends of Letha Scanzoni. She was, as everyone has said, um, just an unparalleled friend and uh, colleague for so many people. And I can only imagine I'm delighted to hear from the family, such a rich and uh, giving member of her of her own most intimate circle. It doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I'm a member of CFT, uh, thanks to Letha and Virginia Ramey Mullencott, who uh, found one of the most um, progressive Catholic feminist liberation theologians that they could dredge up and um, invited <laughs> me to be to be part of things. And I have uh, maintained my membership over the years because I have such deep respect uh, not only for Letha and the late great Virginia, but also for the, the many of you who do this work. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say, the, the second thing I wanted to do was simply to say that while many of you are part of the evangelical women's uh, circles, evangelical feminist circles, I think it's important to note, and especially for the family to know, that Letha was understood to be a scholar in religion uh, writ large. That is to say, she was not confined to the evangelical or to the feminist circles, but she was taken very seriously um, as a scholar in religion. And I simply close by saying we are all in her debt. And um, I particularly uh, send my greetings and my my very warmest wishes from water on this occasion. It's a lovely celebration. And um, thank you, Letha. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate that so much. So I would like then to give us um, all together an opportunity to, um, to, to voice together um, that we remember Letha. So I want to invite us into a responsive experience. Um, this is a Jewish litany of remembrance. Um, and the phrase that I'm going to invite all of us to say together is simply, We remember Letha. And so I will speak a phrase. And 
then all of us will respond together with, we remember Letha. So here we go. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember Letha. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we, we remember, remember Letha. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we, we remember, remember Letha. Letha. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, <laughs> we, we remember Letha. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we, we remember, remember Letha. Letha. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we, we remember Letha. Letha. When we are weary and in need of strength, we, we remember, remember Letha. Letha. When we are lost and sick at heart, we, we remember Letha. Letha. When we have joys we yearn to share, we, we remember Letha. Letha. So long as we live, Letha too shall live, for she Letha. is now a part of us as we remember, remember. Our final piece for today is a video um, that uh, several have put together, Alina and Ann Lindstatter and Dave Scanzoni. And so we have a series of pictures and some music, and this will serve um, as our final um, aspect of our service today. So I turn it over to you, Alina. Thank you. 